What's up guys? Welcome to today's short sermon. Today we're going to be talking about the death of Jesus, specifically the things he said. So we're going to be starting in Matthew 27 verses 35 to 38 where it says, After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard, kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fastened above Jesus' head and announcing the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on the right and one on his left. Then in verse 29 it says, The people passing by sh shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Look at you now, they yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy this temple and rebuild it in three days. Then if you are the Son of God, save yourself and come down from that cross. Then in Luke 23, verses 34, it says, Father, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes and threw him dice. So what he's saying here is, even though he's being mocked, even though he's being beaten and ridiculed, he's still saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't understand what they have done. Sometimes we can be in that position. We can be the ones, we're just going off. We're doing what we feel we enjoy, what satisfies our flesh. And Jesus is like, forgive him, forgive her. You don't know what you're doing. Then later in verses 39, it says, One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed, So you are the Messiah, aren't you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. But the other criminal protested, Don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you today, you will be with, you, with me in paradise. Would, wouldn't be in, it be interesting to see how that man got into heaven? The angel's just like, hey, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, well, I don't know. Well, do you know the Bible? No, I've never heard of it. Well, do you, you know the doctrine of faith, right? No, never heard of it. Uh, you, you know basic scriptures? No, I, I'm i just here. Have you ever went to a Bible study? Have you ever talked about anyone, about Jesus to anyone? It's like, n no. It's like, why are you here? What are you doing here? You don't know anything about our faith. And he says, because that man on the middle cross said I could come. That That's all he needed to get into heaven. That's all he needed. He He's a criminal. He's punishment was the death punishment and he, he just hey Jesus remember me when you go into your kingdom he had faith enough to know this is an important person this is the Messiah he said he has a kingdom and he believed and Jesus saw that he believed and he said you can come with me then in Mark 15, verses 34, it says, Then at three o'clock Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema shabbatini, which means, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And a lot of people believe this is around the time where the sin was just starting to come over Jesus. Because when he says, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? It's saying, God left him. It's saying God isn't there. Meaning the sin was just surrounding him. It was separating him from God and he he just wasn't ready for it. He was like he Jesus lived a perfect life. He's never been with sin. He's never been apart from God. And then all of a sudden all this sin just comes on to him making him un unclean and unable to be in the presence of God. Then in John chapter 19, verses 28 through 30, it says, 
Jesus knew that his mission was now finished to fulfill scriptures. He said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put a hyssop branch, and held it to his lips. When Jesus tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. When he said it is finished, he doesn't just mean, oh, all the scriptures are fulfilled. I've done everything I need to on earth. He's saying it's finished. It's finished for you. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is believe that it is finished. You don't have to do any extra work. You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to prove anything to him. It is finished. Jesus did the work. Our punishment for sin is death. Jesus paid that pr punishment. So now we may have eternal life f through him. Jesus paid the price. So whenever someone says, oh, you're not enough, you're not good enough, you're worthless, Jesus says you're to die for. When, when you're at your low saying, I'm not good enough, Jesus said you are to die for. Jesus said you are worth his life. And we're going around, oh, I'm worthless. No, you're not. Jesus said you are to die for. Jesus said, I love you. Jesus said... You are my son. You are my daughter. He says, I love you. I made you and I made you perfectly. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. See ya.